about to experience often report feeling more empowered and, and getting in touch with the essence of who they really are. So without further ado, please help me welcome Nancy Byers. And I had this image of a blindfold being put on, 
voluntarily, I was like, okay, I have been blind for a while for this process. I wasn't going to get to an understanding here. It was going to have to come to some sort of surrendering from a place of not knowing and not understanding, but knowing in a different way than I was used to knowing. So after the three years, sound became a part of it. It's, it was very halting at first. I was lying on cushions still because I couldn't hold the energy sitting up. And it was, it, 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 at the time it sounded like gibberish to me, and it was very fast and furious and very, uh, I would say at first, very hard for my physical vehicle to hold and to deliver. And I need to find the earlier tapes and bring it to this talk so I can give you a sample of what it sounded like at the beginning so you could compare it to how it is now, because now it's, it's so easy and effortless and um, I can be at Starbucks and a friend can not be feeling well when I'm right there without anybody really knowing you can, you can do it. Whereas for years it was such a huge process going in and going out and um, being a bit dazed by it all. At any rate, the sound had been occurring for eight months when I was going through a rather dark, dark night of the soul in that I couldn't see how, after what was almost at this point, four years, I would ever be able to use this for any benefit. I mean, I'm, I'm a counselor, I pictured myself having you come in as a client, maybe, hi, come on in and take my hand, lie down with me. I wasn't going to cut it, I just wasn't going to. So, um, I, during that difficult time, I got a call from a friend inviting me to listen to a Swami who was talking here in Dallas. And I went to him several nights in a row, enjoyed his talk, and finally got the courage on his last night in Dallas to take a tape and ask him if he could help me with this. And he was very kind, listened to the tape all the way through, and afterwards said, yes, he said, I, I recognize this. This, this. this set of sounds is Sanskrit, and these are the sounds of time. And the tantric yogis use these particular sounds going up their, their chakras to attune to their light bodies. And he was explaining that that's why I was experiencing this sensation of light when I'm doing it all the time. Uh, that helped at the time. At least I had something for my left brain for the first time to hang on to and then let go of course, but hang on to. And over the next two years, after he had told me to just let it deepen and surrender and trust, after that I started being in public places like grocery stores. You know, I'd be standing next to you and I'd have my three kids, Mommy, I want, Mommy, I want. And you'd be there, and I'd be drawn to you for some reason. And I'd look away out of politeness, but I'd have this whole movie going on in my head of you with these sounds coming out of my mouth to you, and how very quickly sound can break up and reorganize energy, reharmonize energy. And if you think about it, just on a daily basis for us, if we wake up and we're feeling lousy, and we go to wherever our stereo is placed, and we turn it up to as high as we can with our favorite music, doesn't it usually lift us in some way? In some way, very quickly, hearing music that we really like can help. So, I saw pictures over and over again. I'd be in a counseling session with a very traditional couple of marital problems, and they would be standing there um, explaining their problems, and I would see a movie, just like I described to you, of right now, the belief form that they're holding could very quickly be broken up and reorganized with the sound. So that was kind of the beginning of this period of, of trusting and yet getting little pieces along the way of, of how to use it eventually. And that eventually did come, and I did get to use it. Uh, I, I, rather than get into that story, you can. I have a website. I'll be happy to share that with you at the end. And you're welcome to look up um, on the website. I have the story written there. So if you want more detail, I'll add some. Uh, today, but, but if you want to get more in detail, you can go to the website and read the story. I'd rather spend the time telling you about the effects of it and also doing a demonstration. Um, let me see, there was one gentleman at a human sounds conference who came up to me uh, when I'm asking the question, what is, or asked the question, what is this language of light? It's a composite of different languages more often than not, from what I understand, from Sanskrit to Arabic to uh, Persian, of course, from Sanskrit, but uh, ancient Chinese, welcome. Um, different languages have been identified, and I was at a healing sounds conference in Colorado delivering it, 
And a gentleman walked up to me and said, do you know what you're saying when you do what you do? And I said, well, I do was going to tell this thing, but I always feel two things. One is, I always feel love when I do it, because it, it, it is love, I feel it. Secondly, I always feel like I have, I'm having this privilege of reminding you of something. It's like I'm saying, remember, 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 remember. And he smiled and he said, I'll be right back. And he went off a little bit, was writing in a corner, and came back and brought me this piece of paper, which I protected, um, uh, passing around. But he said, I understood a lot of what you said. I'm a linguist. And actually, that set that you delivered was in Persian. And on the left side, he wrote uh, some simple phrases that he recognized and on the right translated them. And at the bottom here, he said, you'll be most interested in the one at the bottom. The, the next to the last one says, memory. And the last one says, remember, as in a command. So that was literally the first validation I had for this idea of helping us remember something. I always enjoyed Einstein's, Einstein's quote that you can't, I don't know if this is exact, but it's along the lines of you can't solve a problem with the same consciousness or the same energy that creates that problem. What I believe this language of light offers to us is one of many, but one way of bypassing the way we're used to solving problems and thinking about ourselves. The language of light bypasses that part of us and goes to a much deeper knowing. The part that rationally, it's like, how could I possibly be listening to this woman and get anything out of it? And another part that often remembers something remembers, I won't even say, because that's not for me to say, but remembering who we really are. For example, one woman who was autistic, who I worked with in LA a few years ago, had no way to communicate with the outside world. She was 26 years old, and the prior two years, she'd been introduced to a keyboard as a method of communicating with people. And with, with a counselor's hand, she would her peripheral vision was really good, so she'd be looking around and very quickly move the person's hand hitting these buttons. So after doing this, she was asked, what do you think this is? And very quickly, she typed out, this is to remind us that we're spirit. That we're, well, that's how she said, this is to remind us that we're spirit. Another use for this in general is, is for a sense of relaxation, a sense of heat, uh, Healing often, if I'm working in groups, sometimes someone will hold it, have a back problem or a low problem, and inexplicably to them, that suddenly shifts. Um, also, in working at a place like an expo one time, there was a woman I worked with for quick demos, and she had, I didn't know this, but she called me the next day and left a lengthy message and email saying that the five minutes of the delivery of the language that day, when she was driving home, or driving to her daughter's, she had this shaking in her head feeling, real light shaking, and this gentle falling away energetically. And what I hadn't known when I worked with her, for years she'd been playing with depression. And she said she'd been on meds, and she'd tried different things, and for some reason, the vibrations combined with everything she did before, because I never think it's one thing, but combined with that, somehow she was ready and open in that moment to create a healing for herself in combination with the sound. And it fell away, and six months later, was still completely gone. So that's one of the uses for it. Another um, is for um, migraine headaches. There was a woman in Florida, and I got her telephone about her. I met her briefly when I was working there, but this was long distance. She had been diagnosed with an aneurysm first, but it turned out not to be an aneurysm. It turned out to be this particular kind of migraine headache that is lodged here. And she was in bed, in the dark, curled up in the fetal position in excruciating pain, but wanted sound. So I get this call, and I, I got on the phone and barely talked to her and just held an intention, did the sounding, and then I'd get off, and this happened for I don't, maybe a week to 10 days. This would go on every day. I would call in her just a little bit and then hang up. And then I would hear later from her mother that she'd been able to leave. And this one night, I was leaving my office late. And I hadn't talked to her yet. It, it, 
it was an hour ahead on the East Coast. So I just got by the side of the road, walked to my door, got on the other hand, post called. She was in a really, really bad place that night. So I just sat there and it was like a jackhammer had done. Just so strong. And then it just stopped when it was time to stop. And that was the end of that. And I thought, oh dear, when I hung up. And then the next morning, I get a call from her, the woman in the fetal position. And what had happened was very similar to the woman I described in the depression, in that this after we hung up, she turned to her mother and she said, I just wasted Nancy's time. But anyway, she, she, that was the comment. And within 10 minutes, this gentle vibrating started, and it just started moving throughout her whole being, and it just went poof, like melted. And that whatever it was just shifted, was realigned for harmony for her. Um, one other case having to do with nature was in Jemez Springs outside of Santa Fe, New Mexico, where I was with two friends and we were climbing up into the caves that have natural springs. And there was a little one with a, with a circle with a little bit of water in it and we sat down together, put our feet in the water, and there was this little drop from the top of the stone that was far above us. It kept going, doo, doo, doo. And when I did the sound, and as the sound got faster and faster, it started pouring rain from the rock. I mean, rain, like we were drenched, like we could squeeze our hair and have drops. And when the sound stopped, it all went back to the And I think these pieces of the journey for me have been a, a really stretching me to, to trust and to not have to know, because the rational answer goes, thing, this sound thing. But instead, I, I had to get willing to not know consciously and rationally and to just keep doing it. And that's what, I, that's what I've been doing. Um, the, the most irrational one and most difficult one for me to embrace was from a reading that I got from an electrical engineer of all things in Northern California who was a psychic. It takes about six weeks to get a reading from this guy. And someone else told me to get a reading from another person I had a reading from. So I waited six weeks, got the reading from him, and in the reading, he had said that, he said, you're going to England, you're traveling in England and doing your work, and when you get there, you need to, when you're, when you're at the crop circle uh, location, you need to find time while you're there to remove yourself from the group, go to a field, and do the sounds. Don't take equipment, don't take anyone with you. This is for you. This is for you to understand your work. So that was the part I kind of dismissed from the reading. Until I met, months down the road, I met someone from England. I was invited to work there within uh, six weeks. Eleven cities were set up, and there I was at a crop circle festival, working, standing in the middle of a crop circle doing sounds. Well, we had a meditation at someone's house in Avebury, right in the, near the, all the crop circles. And I thought, I remember the reading. I was like, oh, I can do it. I can run off to a field. So I did. I, Ran off to a field, climbed over fences, went in, you know, into bushes, and stood in the middle of this field, feeling silly but excited. And I held an intention, and I did the sounding. And, and I, in the reading, he said, follow it for 30 days. So I did the reading, and I went back to the house where we had the meditation, and I found the owner and talked to him, and I said, will you indulge me? Like, just kind of sounds silly, but this is what I heard. So would you go by occasionally, since I wouldn't be there, to check this field? or something that's on my way to blah, blah. So I forget how far into it. It wasn't 30 days, but at some point I got an email from her. Oh my God, there's a crop circle in this field with a pie sign next to it. Mathematical pie sign next to it. Now this is where I want you to understand where I was and actually in this regard still am. When that email came, I couldn't take the information in because I wasn't ready to understand that sound has this kind of effect and being a vehicle for it and opening up in this way can really change things at that level. So I didn't answer the email. I, I just kind of went into that to me. She's she just went in the wrong place. But no, I saw her. I was back in England again about a year and a half later. And she said, I can't believe I haven't heard from you. Can you believe it? I said, well, are you sure it was the right place? And, and she had explained to me where she went, and she was 
excited about it, and and I at that point just thought, well, whatever. I mean, we're all hanging out in ministry, aren't we? In different ways in our lives, and that's just another one. But I'm mentioning it because for each of us, we have the challenge of stretching our limits in our beliefs and opening ourselves to new experiences. And I'm still with the language of light, very much in the phase of development and questioning. I still have more questions and answers, but I do it because I love to do it. I love it feel of it for myself. It's healing for me. It also has challenged me in that you don't do the languages, you don't open to them unless you're really ready for change because they do affect me as well. I don't have a hard um, cover that keeps me invulnerable. I, my challenge is to work always on uh, my stuff because it opens up stuff in me all the time. So I have to keep working on that. Um, I would like to dedicate the demonstration part today to a dear friend of mine named Lee Adamson. I just got a call. In fact, I'm a little rattled from the call that she died of an embolism, very unexpectedly, has six daughters. And um, I'm sure her family right now could use some love from all of us. So I'd like to, as well as your individual attention, adding those to the sounds, I'd like to, to offer them. Are there any questions before we start? Okay. What I'm going to do this time, instead of, how much time? Yeah. Instead of going individually this time, I, I'll be here after if there's any, I don't have a booth set up this time, but set, if there's anyone interested in a a session, I can I can do it off on the side. Um, I also have some cards and I have some information. Okay, here we go. Was it time? Oh yeah, seven. She showed me seven. Can you hear me all right? Can you tell me? Hello? I can't lose. Is it better with the mic? Yes. Okay. I'll stay right here. And let me Yeah. 